is that this stem is so thick that I've got to get it out of the way. So once I get my wings set up, so right there is going to be the tip, and right there is where the wing's going to, that's the length. So now i got to come in, and i got to get this out. So that's going to be basically my wing. So I'm going to set it up. And you spin just so it binds yeah. down on the... Well, this thread. is 18 knot thread. Oh, wow. It's a nano silk, Semperfly nano silk. And so if I... Um, I want it nice and flat because otherwise it becomes like a razor. Yeah. Oh, so you flatten it out. Yeah, yeah so I flatten my thread out. I do it a lot with this stuff. Yeah. If you're a right-handed person, you have to, every time you wrap, you cord up, cord up, cord yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. So. How do you know? Well, you'll see it when it flattens out. Yeah. Yeah. So when I first started tying with this, I was doing a hair wing like on this ant. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I didn't have it flat, and it. Um, I didn't have it flat, and then when I pulled down, it scissored my hair right off of my lap. Okay, so now I'll just stand. So the end of that stem now is sitting right on my uh, shaft. Okay? Yeah. So now. We'll just do a Mayfly, I won't do a Royal. Mm -hmm. So for a tail, I'm gonna use Coke de Leon. Yeah. How you doing? And Why is the Coke de Leon Coke such de Leon a is, a, is a Spanish chicken. Yeah. Why is it it's so commonly used on a lot of flights? Is that, um, how's it different than just a normal? Well, it's good, It's it's the fibers are kind of stiff. Yeah. So this is a Coke de Leon hack. And this is uh, what they call a tailing pack. So this is a whole feather right there. Yeah, yeah. So it's just a, it's a nice tailing fiber. It's stiff, pretty tough, natural. So being this is an adult mayfly, I'm going to take three. Yeah. And if I pull it off perpendicular, my ends are even. Mm -hmm. There you go, there's a, that's a good tip. Pull it off, pull the hack, or pull it out perpendicular, then pull it off. Same with pheasant. You don't cut it ever? No, and now, so you'll watch a lot of people, they'll measure their tail on top of yeah. their fly, try to tie it on on top. I just take my tips, put it at a 45 where my thread and my hook intercept. Now it's on top. Yep. Pretty simple. Mm -hmm. And then I can just take and adjust my length. Yep. Go ahead and tie my butts down. Bring them right up to the back of where the uh, feather. Okay, and then to adjust my tail, I can just take my nail. Mm -hmm. Do you have a wrap under Split that? Split it. A wrap underneath it. So now I have yeah. the three. I can. Yeah. So I can come back and my nails set it up pretty good. Yeah. But if I want, I can come back and yeah. one wrap. No, that's never going to come down. No. Nope. You ever break off any of the hackle fi tail fibers fishing? Well, that's one of the reasons we use uh, uh, Coke de Leon because it's it is a little bit stiffer, oh, nice. and you go. so I'm going to use uh, a goose biot. Oh, cool. You know about biots? Uh, a little bit. I, I... So you can see the little notch right there. Yeah. So the way this this feather, this is the front edge of a goose feather. Mm -hmm. So if I tie it in with the notch facing backwards or down, the ridge is going to come up with every wrap. Yeah. If I tie it in with the notch facing this way, it's going to wrap flat. Yeah. 
And a lot of people say an adult mayfly has got a flat body. Oh, really? But I like the ridge. Yeah, yeah, the ridge looks cool. So I'm just going to tie it in right by the tip. And you always tie it in from the tip? Oh, um, yes. Bring my thread forward. Go ahead and throw this out of the way. I like to use a little bit of glue. Mm -hmm. That just super glue or? Yeah, it's uh, Z Mint. Oh, Wopsy. Wopsy, right. And then I just let the weight of the hackle plier so I don't pull it out. Oh, there you go. That's where the rotating thing makes it awesome. Especially when you're filming. Yeah. I do a lot of videos for oh, Moonlit. For, for who? Moonlit, fly fishing. Okay. So I'm on the pro staff of Moonlit and also on the pro staff of um, Norvice. What's, what's Moonlit? It's a company out of Idaho Falls. They do hooks. Oh, okay. They're kind of um, not really partners with Semper Fly with the Nano Silk, but they work together. Uh, they make rods, um, glass rods, um, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Just fly tying stuff. Sure. But I like their hooks a lot. Sample hooks? Oh, thank you. I like Daiichi too. Yep. All right. So now my body's done. So I'm going to come in and put some hackle. And um, it's a lovely Cree saddle from Fly Fish Food, Norm, oh, Utah. You go. Yeah, those guys, they just moved into a bigger place, didn't they? They went from 550 square feet to 5,500 square yep. feet. Wow. They don't know what to do with themselves. No. I think they're going to have to start doing like donkey rides yep. or something. Well, I remember asking uh, on the uh, interview, he, it's still a, a side side game, though that's not even their They both time. have real jobs. Yeah. Which says something, I mean, they can be that big of a, a place. Well, and, well they, they built it online. Yeah, I know. Yeah, which was totally. smart. I mean, they're real, really smart. Especially Curtis. Cheech is like, the, he's the personality. Yeah, Curtis he's, is I the know. brains. Yeah, that's right. No, I'm just kidding. They're both, yeah, I know. they're two of my favorite people, but um, they built it online. You know what they did is they made fly tying cool again. That's right. That's, for right. that's, the, a, that's exactly what. Uh, fly tying used to be like an old old fart. You know Kelly Gallup. Oh yeah. I, I interviewed him back, and he, that's exactly what he said. He said fly tying is, is somehow it's become cool. And I think they had a lot to do with that. So, but they're really good guys, and I um, I'm on the board that runs the Wasatch Expo in Salt Lake, and uh, I got them to sponsor the fly tying theater this year and they're really good to they're good to me and uh -huh. good to us and yeah, I do a lot of videos and the guys that um, I video all the guys that tie for Moonlit. Some yeah. of them are traditional, yeah. and their hands are always. Oh, yeah. I know. So when you do this, right. it's easy. you're out of the way. Yeah, well, that's what I was talking to Curse about too, because you know you have like Tim Legler who does the one of the few guys that does the camera angle from the perspective of the tire. And Tim Flagler. Yeah. What Kurt said, or Curtis said, was that um, in their research they found that most people are used to the the camera angle from the front, that it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, because that's a pain in the butt. Yeah, it is. It's more, yeah, you got a camera in front. And it's... So if you go to the Moonlit channel and look at a lot of my videos, when I first started doing it for them, they didn't want instructional videos. They wanted like arty, oh, really? four minute. Sure. So I do three camera angles. Uh -huh. I have one on the fly, one on the vice, one over here, 
I record all three at once, yeah. and then I and edit Adobe it. Premiere. Yeah. And I put music. How long does it take you to, to edit and get one ready? It takes a like two hours, three hours. Yeah, it takes a while. But when I finish, the videos are only like three minutes long or yeah. five minutes. Right. And you should go to the channel and check them out. I'll check it out. Yeah. But they're uh, they're not instructional. No. They're made for people that normally couldn't sit through a uh, fly tying video. They can watch them. Yep. So, um, but then the other day they called and asked if I would do a, uh, a tutorial video. So this is a good trick too, whenever you have yep. hackle forward flyers, uh, flies, yep. Use the half inch, half inch yep. pushes all your hackle That's back. That's a, great, that's a great tip. And then with this nano silk, you can't cut it. So you just open your tips, clip it. I used to cut them off. I used to do it the old way. All right. We're about to do the magic. So these are my uh, turkey wally wings instead of duck. It behaves a lot differently. I just put the UV on the head. All right, here we go. So I grab two fibers. I'm gonna go with three. I'm going to hold this tight. Then on this side. They did the same thing. They used wax. Well, they used wax. They did the same thing. They used wax. Once you get that wax on it, now, if this was duck, I would grab this and go, yep. but I don't have the balls to do it with turkey. It's like a turkey flat? Yeah. Nice work. Now, is that when you talk about a cat steel style uh, dry fly? Is there a specific? Yeah, I mean, there is. Is that not necessarily that one be a cat steel? You know, it's similar. I mean, it's it's you know quill body, right? Mayfly, but it's um. What I mean, I'm not a super historian, sure. but I think. The Wally Wing was designed by some guy in Sweden or somewhere. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. But I mean, yeah, it's it's cat skilly. It's kind of like an Adams. And you make that the hackle like half as long as the. Uh, I do. I do. I mean, you know, like on my humpy and stuff, they're high on my uh, royal wolf. But, 